Their tagline is ideas worth spreading, but perhaps it's more about the manner in which those ideas are spread and the engaging format of presentation that is now infamous with TED. In this video, I'm gonna share each of those nine secrets along with insights from the book and a TED talk for each secret to demonstrate the point further. There's three different types of presentations that are talked about in TED Talks being one, emotional, two, novel, and three, memorable. So the first public speaking secret discussed in this book is unleash the master within. And this is all about finding your passion. That in order to connect with an audience, you need to really find that spark, that thing that makes your heart sing because if you are talking from a place of passion you are more likely to connect with and inspire your audience the ted talk that illustrates this point is from mathieu ricard now he is a former biochemist turned buddhist monk who temporarily left the monastery to give this ted talk on the habits of happiness ricard tells the author that these ideas are dear to me, not only because they brought me a lot of fulfillment, but because I am convinced that they can bring some good to society. I am particularly passionate to show that altruism and compassion are not luxuries, but essential needs to answer the challenges of our modern world. The second secret is a mastering the art of storytelling. Now, Brene Brown said in one of her TED Talks that stories are just data with a soul. It may or may not be stories about yourself. And in this book, they talk about how these stories can be either personal, they can be stories about others, or they can be stories about brand success. Now, the TED Talk to illustrate this secret is from Brian Stevenson. And Mr. Stevenson is a human rights lawyer and also the grandson of Rosa Parks. He wrote the book Just Mercy that the film is written on and shared a very personal TED Talk. So much so that actually 65% of his TED Talk was spent telling stories. The third secret shared in this book is to have a conversation and that is focused really on practicing and being intentional with your talk and practicing it so much that the content becomes as natural as having a conversation with a friend and it's not just the words itself that this section focuses on but it tells you to consider the rate, the volume, the pitch and the pauses of your delivery. Now the TED talk that goes with this point actually could have gone with two, three, maybe even four of the different secrets throughout the book. It is one of the talks that is discussed the most in this book and that is Dr. Jill Taylor who believe it or not was a brain scientist, is a brain researcher who suffered a stroke herself. But in the context of this specific TED secret, she varies the speed of her delivery throughout the presentation to make varying points. And she also has a pretty awesome prop, a human brain. So now we're moving on to the novel section of the book. And this secret is about teach me something new. And here they talk about how brains love novelty, how it stimulates the dopamine response when you are learning or introduced to something new. And actually, it's maybe not always possible to be presenting on something that's new, but to challenge yourself whether you can package it differently or offer a fresh or different perspective to the material that you're presenting. The talk worth looking up with this point is Hans Rosling's TED Talk with the best stats you've ever seen. He is a statistician who helped also develop the, the tool Gapminder. And he uses this during the TED Talk to dynamically present data and charts in a new and fresh way. So our next TED secret is to deliver a jaw-dropping moment. Now, according to this book, 
every presentation should have one so definitely take the time to work out what is your jaw dropping moment what is the sound bite the twitter headline that is the central idea to your talk and of course we think of steve jobs frequently in this kind of uh, discussion in particular the sound bite of the 1000 songs in your pocket with the ipod Undoubtedly one of the most jaw-dropping moments in TED history was when Bill Gates unleashed a jar of mosquitoes on his audience when he was talking about malaria. They were of course a, in no harm but it was a viral moment and it was particularly memorable moment that was obviously discussed uh, the next day and well beyond. So as well as novelty, the brain also loves humour. And so the next secret discussed in this book is to lighten up. And they give a whole host of different examples or methodologies that you could use to introduce humour into your talk. This might be through anecdotes and personal stories. It could be analogies and metaphors, or you might use quotes, videos and photos. But of course, it's important to be intentional with any of those methods, make it appropriate to the topic. And the most popular TED talk of all time is the example here, which is Sir Ken Robinson's talk about whether schools are killing creativity. Perhaps a, on the face of it, a dry subject, but in his quite unique manner of how he talked about it, interlacing humour throughout the presentation, it has become the most popular TED talk of all time. And now we move into part three and these relate to making it memorable. And the first secret here is to stick to the 18 minute rule. Now, a lot of TED Talks, of course, are vaguely in this 18, 20 minute long time frame. And the TED curator, Chris Anson, argues that that is long enough time to be taken seriously and make your point, but short enough for our human brains to give it its full attention. Now, often we are asked to do talks that go on for 45 minutes, an hour or even longer, and we don't have the ability, even though I think it would make it more difficult, we don't have that ability to bring our talks down to 18 minutes. And if this is the case, then the book talks about breaking up your talks, potentially every 10 minutes or so with less cognitively demanding content. So either telling a story or perhaps sharing a video, but breaking it into sections. And another great way to think about these different sections is to use the rule of three. Now, as you've seen from this video, the book is broken into those three parts of which there are three different secrets within each part. And it's a really nice way to think about planning our presentations. Now the TED talk that exemplifies this uh, rule of three within the 18 minute framework is Majora Carter, who is a activist talking about greening the ghetto. And she presents three different case studies to present her point. So the penultimate secret discussed in this book is paint a mental picture with multi-sensory experiences. Now research suggests that when you hear about something, within uh, three days time you have on average about 10% recall. But if you hear something and also see a visual alongside that, this recall then jumps to 65%. So we all know the power of pictures, but can we be intentional and really make use of them in our presentations? The TED Talk definitely that I'm gonna to recommend to illustrate this point is David Christian's History of Our World in 18 Minutes. And in this talk, David Christian uses a mixture of different methods and illustrations, but also just starts immediately with a video about scrambled eggs. And it is a really beautiful way to illustrate his point. 
Our final secret from the TED Talks book then is to stay in your lane, which sounds a little bit negative, but actually the point they're trying to make here is about being authentic, being open and being transparent. You don't want to stand on that stage and try and be Steve Jobs or Oprah Winfrey or Bill Gates. You want to be you. You want to be authentic to your passion that you are presenting and to yourself. And so they suggest here um, actually practicing presenting to different audiences and present to perhaps your friends and family who know you best and can give you feedback as to whether you are coming across like yourself. The TED Talk to go along with this is from Sheryl Sandberg when she was COO at Facebook because she talks in the book actually about the need to be authentic and how she wasn't sure whether to share a particular personal story with the audience. But in doing so and in admitting her failings and being very open, she was able to connect more closely. So those are the nine secrets from Talk Like Ted book. Perhaps not every talk needs to include all of them. Perhaps you don't always have the ability to present in a TED-like manner, but some really thought-provoking lessons for us when we come to plan our talks. Every time you give a talk or a presentation, it is ultimately a sales pitch. You may or may not be physically trying to sell a product, but there is definitely an idea or multiple ideas in your talk that you are trying to convey and trying to sell to your audience. So next up, take a look at my book Insights from To Sell Is Human, another great book about selling, but doing it in an authentic and humane way that is suitable for today's society.